Welcome back to Excel-Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my site at Excel-Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest tips, tricks, and techniques and everything about Excel. All right, uh, today we are finishing up our Friday challenge where we were talking about advanced summation techniques. Um, so head on over to Excel-Templates.com and download the sample file. Give it a shot yourself before we finalize uh, this video and you can see if you got the right answers. So, so far we've done it with a pivot table, we have done it with some ifs, and we have done it with a sum product formula. So uh, head on over there and see if you can replicate the same data. Now, uh, today we're doing the bonus uh, episode where we're gonna show you how to do it with an array formula. Um, so the first things that we wanna do is let's understand a little bit more about an array formula. So an array formula, you are going to enter a formula as normal, and then you are gonna press Control, Shift, and Enter all at the same time. So Control, Shift, and then the Enter key. And so let's go ahead and enter in a very simple formula, equals one. And so you can see that there is a formula here. It's called, it's equals one. But if I now um, edit that formula and do Control, Shift, Enter, you will see up in the formula bar, it's got these little uh, curly brackets around it. And that means it is an array formula. So uh, it gives special um, abilities to the formula in that if it is an array available formula, it will create a group or of items or lists uh, that it can compare criteria against and return one or more values. So you are not entering in these curly brackets. If I do curly brackets around it, you'll see it's text. It is not actually a formula anymore. So um, to do that, remember it's Control Shift Enter. All right, so now let's go ahead and get to our array formula. Now, the best way to learn an array formula is to do a very simple one, and we're gonna do it just for the first set of eight data points. So I've highlighted those in yellow over in the top left-hand corner, and we're gonna do it for store one. Now you see store one only has one value in this whole entire um, range of data, and it's 818. So we can, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a sum formula. So we're gonna do equals sum and hit tab. And so we're just doing a normal sum formula, but we're gonna embed an if statement in there. So we're gonna do if and hit your tab key. And we're gonna say if this value over in E47, and we wanna lock in the column so as we copy it across, it always stays in the E column. I'm gonna hit F4 several times until the E is absolute value. So that is the dollar sign E. And so we're gonna say if, oops, actually I wanna back this up. Let's get rid of that, start over. Um, first I wanna do is, I want it's usually a little easier to go ahead and highlight the range of data that you're gonna compare against. I'm gonna hit F4, so I'm highlighting those first eight values there in store ID uh, for uh, um, our sales data. And then I'm gonna hit F4 and make that absolute value all the way across. Then I'm gonna say if B2 through B9 equals this value over here in column E, and I'm gonna hit F4 a couple of times until we get to absolute value of the column. And so we are checking if that column of data is equal to E47, then what we want to do is we want to then sum the sales data. So I'm gonna highlight that sales data after my comma, which is my value if it is true, as you see there. Let's go ahead and hit F4 and lock that in as an absolute value. Now, I don't care if it's false because the array formula will take care of that. So we will just end our formula right there. And so I'm gonna end my parentheses, which is the if end, and then I'm gonna end it for the sum. And remember, you have to hit Control, Shift, Enter for this to work. So notice, if I just hit the Enter key, it does not work. If I go back in and edit my formula, and do control shift enter, you'll see it comes up with a value of 818. So we, once again, we remember this store value, um, it's gonna be checking all of these different arrays. And if it is equal to the criteria, it's gonna get that value when it is true and add that into the summation formula. Now, if you have never used it, go up to your ribbon for formulas. And then over on the right, you'll see formula auditing. What I want you to do is I want you to click on that evaluate formula when you've highlighted your array formula cell. And as you notice, remember it's an array formula, so now it has those curly brackets around it. Now, if we're uh, in this formula here, we can evaluate it. Let's see what this array formula is doing. We are going to evaluate it. So E47 is store one, 
and it compares it against all of those store IDs. Now I only did eight, so you can see the different values that are showing up there. Store two, store three, store five, so store two, store three, store, store five. It's got each one of those as a different data set, and it's checking it to see if it is equal to store one. Well, we should get false, 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 and then true. Um, that the final, the eighth value does equal store one. So if I click into this next step and hit evaluate, look at that false, 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 false. True is the eighth value. Now it's saying for that eighth value, I want to get the eighth value in my array of values as a part of my if statement if it was true. So if you click evaluate once again, you're gonna see 818 show up. Um, and so it's got false, 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 and 818, which is that store value um, of sales for store one. Now it's gonna sum up all of those. Well, falses are equal to zeros. 818 is of course equal to 818. So the sum of all of that is gonna give you 818. So once again, if you don't know how to do that, uh, uh, you should always go and check your formulas up under the formulas ribbon, evaluate formulas. Now let's take a look at our um, example that we wanted to create for our um, summation checker of store by date ranges, right? We want to see what's available here in January for sales and not just the total store amount. Now so let's go ahead and edit this formula. I'm just going to hit F2 and hit enter to kind of get back into the generic formula area. Now we've what we're going to do is we're just going to keep embedding more if checkers and eventually come up with a summation at the very end. So let's start it from the very beginning. All right, so let's go ahead and create our array formula for all 150,000 data points. So once again, we're going to start out with a summation formula because we're going to add up our final true values or false values that are going to equal zero. Um, so we're going to do a sum and we're going to do if uh, we want to check our store ID first. So I'm going to go into the store ID column and go down to 100 row 150,000 and highlight my data all the way up to uh, row two as well and uh, hit F4 to lock that in. And we're gonna say if that is equal to, and here we were gonna have to go find our value, um, if it is equal to the store ID that we have over in cell E47. So um, if that B2 through B150,000 is equal to E47, and let's hit F4 and lock that into the column. So it's dollar sign E47, so we can copy it across and it will continue to be locked into the column E. And now, um, now that we're done with that checker, we're gonna go ahead and do our next criteria. So we do a comma. If it's true there, let's now check and see if, and hit your tab button, if um, the date column, so let's go ahead and highlight our entire date column here, that is A2 through A150,000. Hit F4 to lock that in. If that is greater than or equal to, and let's go find our date here. Oops, I keep getting into, I'm all the way down at the bottom end of the range, so let's go ahead and find um, where it is equal to. So we can get into, there it is. Um, so uh, we're gonna now check and see if the column of A2 through A150,000 is equal to or greater than row F or cell F46. Now, since we are gonna be copying this down, we want it to always remain in this row. So we want the row number to have the absolute value. And I'm gonna hit F4 a few times until 46 shows up. And uh, if that's true, we also want to now check, and so do a comma to go to our next if statement. And we're going to say if, we'll check all of these dates once again. Hit F4, so that's A2 through A157,000. Whoops, I unclicked it, and let's get that in there again. Hit F4 to make it an absolute value. If it is less than, and let's go ahead and uh, highlight our data um, for that point, if it is less than or equal to G46, and I can go ahead and hit F4 and lock in once again the num the row 46. So, well, let's go ahead and take a look at this. If uh, the store ID range is equal to E47 over here on the left, and if the date is greater than or equal to um, the value here in cell F46, and if A, the dates are less than our next month, which starts February, 
Then let's do a comma if all of that is true. Let's go ahead and highlight our entire sales data. C2 through C150,000. Let's lock that in as um, our value for, uh, uh, as you can see here, um, uh, absolute value for our sales data, and we are done. We don't care if it's all false after that because it'll just be zeros. Let's go ahead and end our parentheses for the first if statement, our second if statement, our third if statement, and then finally the summation formula. Now, once again, for this to work, you see if I hit enter, um, it does not work. It shows zero. It's, um, it's because it's not being entered as an array formula. So what we want to do is um, edit that formula and do control shift enter and it goes and calculates the entire amount. Now let's go ahead and check it. So our sum product had 337, our pivot table had 337,425. Looks like our value is correct. I should now be able to copy all of these array formulas down. It will recalculate 3.257 million. I can highlight that whole range and copy it across through December. It's going to take a second to calculate, kind of like some product. It's just uh, got to go through all 150,000 of each one of those checkers. So each one of these formulas has 150,000, 300,000, 450,000 values that it's checking to come back with those summations. Pretty darn fast if you ask me. 66 million was our final answer. So that array formula does work. Um, let me uh, now let me go ahead and delete and show you one other thing about array formulas that you need to be aware of. You'll see if I try and copy this down, that's fine. Um, let me undo that. But if I try and copy this as a whole range, you notice it's just not working because um, what you'll typically want to do is let's say you can just copy Control C, highlight this entire range, and do Control V you'll get this error. You cannot change any part of an array. That's because it is also trying to repaste itself uh, right on top of that cell. So it's usually easier just to copy it uh, over and then copy it down using the fill handle. Or if you are going to copy it with Control V and Control Paste, or Control C, uh, yeah, Control C to copy and Control V to paste, just do not include that cell, um, and it should work out just right for you. So now you've learned how uh, array formulas work. Once again, go out, go up to your formulas ribbon and use your Evaluate Formulas button. And you can even do it on the 150,000 range. It's just going to show you a lot of data. You can scroll all the way through it. It's hard to check and see are you really getting what you're uh, trying for, especially if you're seeing errors. But as you evaluate it, you'll see all the different falses. There's some trues that are in there. And uh, it's going to keep stepping through the formula. And it's just really hard with that many data points to see exactly where you are in the entire process. This is the final date checker to make sure it's less than February. And um, finally, uh, it's come up with all of the trues and falses. And now it's going to apply it to um, the sales data value. And uh, so just real difficult, to, unless you have a small set of data, to have it step through that. But if you can shrink up your data a little bit, make sure it's working on the data as you believe it should be. Uh, after you've done that, you can expand it to your entire range of data that you're looking for. So array formula is really cool. Uh, they can do lots of uh, wild conditional checkers within these if statements and other ways to do it. So highly advise you checking out and understanding how to use array formulas as well. If you uh, wanted to see all the techniques, check out the show notes so you can go back and check out some product, some ifs, the quick pivot table option that I gave you, as well as more detail on the array formula. Thanks and have a great day.